Welcome everyone to a irregular breaking news here of our IT segment. For those there in the Apple um, <coughs> reality distortion field or so, Worldwide Developer Conference this year virtual due to the current situation. And um, probably most um, yeah, influential in the IT ecosystem landscape here is another transition. Previously, decades ago, PowerPC to Intel and now over a decade later, Intel to ARM vSource is coming. Uh, long time already, I speculated and mentioned this a couple of times already and now apparently it becomes real. And um, here, of course, as usual, MacRumors doing a pretty good summary of this event. And um, of course, it's exactly what we expected, right? So no really a surprise there. Family of Mac socks system on chips, meaning CPU, chipset, GPU and stuff. Um, incredible features and <laughs> performance. <clears throat> common architecture. They mean, of course, common architecture with the iPhone. So of course, they, in the typical Apple, we are the best and the only one who can do this. <clears throat> Not of course, ARM uh, since the 80s, previous video, ARM instructions and architecture from uh, BBC Micro and Arcon, Arcon uh, Risk Machine stuff there. And so, yeah, 30 years later, um, Apple can do that too. Integrating hardware, yeah, the, the infamous peak pack integration of my Mac Retina MacBook Pro still after six years does not reliably wake up with an external display attached and yeah, it's a 4K display, but hey, it's what you're using since six years, right? Anyway, amazing and, and other peak bugs. <coughs> you see this re recurrently on my Twitter, partition stuff and uh, other stuff not, not working and whatever. So anyway, of course, they say here amazing performance and stuff, but truth to be told, not only on this, but other um, snazzy labs to Linus Tech Tips and others really currently prove stuffed thermal throttling. So it's not only I fantasizing here, but uh, other people finding the same and water cooling um, MacBook Airs because water cooling. Anyway, um, just the other day, like yesterday or so, Linus there in, in Canada speculated that, hey, maybe they thermal throttle this Mac that when they bring the ARM Macs, they can say, hey, look at the performance. But yeah, previously it was thermal throttling to no avail, but now, nah, anyway. Um, so Macs with ARM silicon. So the fun thing is, um, fun thing in a second, but yeah, high bandwidth caches. Yes, if the Intel caches were not, the Intel caches were so high bandwidth, they had a couple of security vulnerabilities from well, previous videos. But yeah, machine learning oscillators probably like B float 16 or some GPU stuff. It's it's of course the usual. This is also my grief with the IT industry. I right? hear some some buzzwords and it's like, yeah, can you give us the real specs? Because yeah, what the heck does machine learning oscillators wonder whether they mean the uh, GPU or B float 16 stuff of uh, 16 bit floating point. But um, yeah, advanced power management as if the Intel stuff and Intel and AMD stuff is not advanced because yeah, only Apple can do this when they uh, use other Intel Zeal or whatever power management controllers, but yeah, whatever. High efficiency audio processor, it's like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, and yeah, crypto, uh, cryptography accelerators when just in the previous x86 ISA video, I uh, told you and you might have learned that VR of all the VR C7 stuff of 2000, whatever that was, three or whatever, was one of the first who had a crypto acceleration there on x86 silicon. And certainly they were not the first, certainly there was other IBM, whatever, uh, mainframe stuff to uh, solid crypto. But long story short, um, what kind of performance can we expect? I compared here, looked up um, in, in this popular Geekbench stuff that um, surprisingly the Mac Mini, if you take a Mac Mini, so yes, uh, performance is there, but yeah, thermal throttling, right? So yeah, it's <clears throat> unless your water cools this and tweaks the thermal profile there in the um, BIOS for um, SMC, system management controller stuff of thermal profile and thermal throttling. But yeah, indeed, the iPad Pro, what people already previously said, hey, look at this iPad Pro, um, Performance is indeed better than the 
lowest dual V ultra low voltage Intel SKU there that there yeah, is thermal throttling unless you water cool it anyway. Um, so and what we're getting here also, but the, the performance is do is Apple that much better? No, of course not. They also only I said this before. Um, my famous famous last words. They also only cook with water. Um, so where's the performance coming from? If this data is correct, which it may or may not be, then this a little bit better performance might be brought to you by vastly larger caches so much too they are that much better. I know they just throw a little bit of more caches in there and probably I had six months or so um, with the, the same of Intel Silicon, right? Six months ago we had a live stream of Intel Ice Lake or whatever that was and how do they make this stuff faster like 3% there, 2% there? It's, it's of course the buffers and caches, stupid, right? Just double everything and it's 3% faster. So it's not only doubled, but um, like four times the L1 level one instruction data cache. And um, maybe if this is correct, not really sure if the level two cache is indeed, we probably should fact check that with Apple A12 with maybe Wikipedia or something, not that would, that would be uh, that more precise, but at least another indicator. Um, that was L2, how many drop frames, hey, zero drop frames. Yeah, they indeed have here um, L2 cache 8 megabyte. And to be honest, truth be told, for this uh, sizes here, um, with our computer science background, I have to say this level of performance is not that impressive if you factor in the much larger, although to be fair, okay, to be fair, um, level three cache of nine megabytes, so, so much to yeah, apple and oranges, but anyway, still not that impressive. Of, of course, it's a good design and certainly Apple hired some good people there or actually purchased, um, we mentioned this probably in some other video, Apple purchased, there was once upon a time, there was this PA Zemi uh, startup company that built a power power efficient power PC that Apple was also interested before the Intel transition in 2004, whatever. And Apple and this, this power PC chipped, um, they, they shipped to some network appliances and some Amiga X1K or something uh, was using it. So this process existed, but Apple uh, just purchased this company as per usual, start, start up purchase stuff. and. Um, they didn't use the PowerPC stuff, but they used this as an ARM team. So all the ARM um, development, and you've seen in the previous videos of here, uh, instructions and architecture, it's not that different. So just take this power efficient stuff, although it was not that power efficient, certainly scale it down a little bit. So much to performance, of course, power, power efficient PowerPC performance from PA Zemi was much better back in the day, but certainly they couldn't fit a 30 watt or nine watt or whatever. Uh, sock there in an iPhone or iPad. Anyway, they used this team, scaled it down a little bit, um, process shrinked it, power efficiency and arm front. And as you've seen in the previous videos, um, all the stuff there is pretty similar, just a little bit of different instruction decoder and a little bit of um, different MMU and other stuff. Anyway, um, that's it for the most part. The most surprising thing for me is that they don't even ship it, right? Um, so this is not like sometime soon. Yeah, also Mac OS big Siri, it's like seriously. Um, even they commented here um, drugs. Um, what on what drugs were they? Um, this is usually my saying here. So even Mac rumors copies our what drug are they handing out there in this space web campus? Because seriously. The naming of this OS is, in my opinion, less than stellar. But coming back to this stuff, so this is not shipping soon, aka uh, next month. So all they have is um, some developer transition kit. And back in the day, the developer transition kit was a whole um, big tower aluminum cheese grater. This time it's a Mac Mini because yeah, obviously, right, uh, iPhone. PCB there kind of in the Mac mini enclosure, 812 set, just exactly what I showed you there. And that is only shipping to selected developers. I actually um, took a look um, half an hour ago there from my main desk and 
um, wanted to see if we can apply because oh, this is, now it's loading. Oh, it's, some minutes ago it wasn't loading. Um, it was down as per usually. So apparently, you, I'm not even sure if they sell this. In back in the day, it was I think like maybe a thousand bucks loan. You could not keep this. This original. It was just an Pentium 4 of net burst of garbage um, into garbage um, architecture there. So totally not um, desirable in a G5 enclosure, right? Um, few people, people somehow kept this. Um, back in the day, I didn't even make an effort to apply for this stuff. So I'm not really sure if they sell it or if you can keep it um, or if, you, if they, as 15 years ago, they just loan it. Um, so developers can apply. So unfortunately, we probably at Exacode here don't delay try our amazing paperless office stuff of exact scan of the arcade and recompress today. But um, unfortunately, we need to get some probably for obviously compatibility testing can't sell some um, amazing Mac software. Um, so I didn't buy a Mac for six years. This we probably need to get for testing, obviously. But yeah, so this stuff shipping this week. But can you get one? Um, not sure. Um, let's see if Firefox doesn't crash if I pull this tab out. But Hello, can we pull? Why is this tip not coming out of there? Um, let's quickly look in here with... Um, I'm not even sure if I don't have a typo in my path. Ah, freaking too far. Don't have my... Hmm. Don't have an iPhone anymore. <laughs> Can't two-factor two factor authenticate. Anyway, I keep you updated. Um, so yeah, and it's not even... Um, so first system, maybe, potentially, but the previous Apple stuff was usually delayed. They're not even saying what it is, right? So whether it's a Mac Mini or a MacBook Air, although maybe something they refreshed shortly. So yeah, um, not impressed by not very specific details and certainly not impressed with uh, not even announcing what kind of system. Although they might do this not to um, decrease their sales because if they would sell it's a Mac Mini or a MacBook Air, then people would probably buy it less. But one warning I always said, don't really buy this because you will be more in general not very recommended because it's way less universal, right? The current Macs are just a PC with a SMC system management controller and the new ones with a T2 chip. Um, and the SMC has two hardware keys. Um, I, uh, you can look this up in QEMU where Alexander Graf um, someone I know in Germany and I kept maintaining this QMO patches. So there are the, the big secret of, I, I mentioned this before and it's probably already a well-known um, thing, there is what is checking on startup. There is a, do, please don't, uh, don't steal macOS, don't, so DSOM, don't steal uh, DSMO, don't steal macOS. If you ever wondered what is your DS, DSMO process, that is don't steal macOS. Um, and that process on startup is checking two SMC keys, um, OS key 0 and OS key 1, and they are something of uh, please don't steal macOS uh, protected by the thwart uh, uh, copyright Apple, Apple Inc. or something. Um, some, some string of 64 or whatever characters it was. Um, you find the details with Google, obviously. But... Um, the new Macs, of course, have additionally the T2 chip for like real encryption. And I think this, so not only can you not run Mac or maybe Linux, we will see. The, the big question is how locked down will this stuff be? Um, can you, will it be EFI? Um, can you boot ARM Windows and ARM Linux? Um, I have the suspicion maybe not. And this will, of course, be truly a limiting, right? Because I said this before, um, I would not be surprised if the sales go down. And given that this is not very user-friendly and not very desirable hardware, in my opinion, I would actually even hope that this stuff doesn't sell as good. And that is the big thing that, that Apple, I said this before, Apple is underestimating how many people buy a Mac just to have shiny aluminum hardware as a front desk reception stuff at your local law office, um, your doctor, um, and so on, and uh, run Windows or virtual machines or developers, even if you are uh, a pro developer stuff. And uh, many of even many of my customers with 
paperless exact and stuff many normal users run yeah for accounting software right you have an accounting software it's windows only and you run it in parallels and stuff so although there will be um, virtualization so as per the previous transition from PowerPC to Intel, there is Rosetta 2. If you're new to Mac and stuff, if you're wondering why this Rosetta 2, because um, the first like Rosetta version one was, uh, which they licensed by the way, um, from from someone, uh, maybe IBM purchased it later uh, or something of that sort. It was shipping in Mac OS 10.5 and 10.6 or so, or maybe even 10.4. It maybe the first Intel Mac OS was 10.4 to 10.6. This was like QEMU on steroids, just in time recompiling PowerPC to Intel and this Rosetta 2, they claim here better performance and stuff. Maybe because PowerPC to x86 is not as nicely jittable because x86 has less registers. I would estimate uh, with my experience and probably you wanna share like and subscribe for that. Um, with my experience, I would say uh, just in time, like like not like QEMU. QEMU is not the fastest with TCG tiny code generator. Um, I'm always surprised how not as amazing the QEMU uh, user emulation is. It, of course, it's running, but in my opinion, it's a little bit slowish. But it's very generic, right? Probably it's not as performant because it's very generic. If you like assembly hand optimize some JIT for um, x86 to ARM. To ARM 64, especially. Um, actually, wait a second. Yeah, they have. Uh, yeah, I think as per the previous video, as far as I remember, 32 general purpose purpose registers. So this is twice as many registers, and um, I would think you can probably hack something very fast, very high performance, like maybe 75 or whatever, uh, like transmitter code morphing kind of whatever because you have more registers so you could reserve like 16 of your 32 maybe we should actually fact check that uh, love we love fact checking here um like this is a arch a 64 also, also that of uh, wiki previous video arm and stuff and instructions and architecture and let's see registers um yeah 31 because one is zero register also by the way i i uh, checked this at the end of the last video um that is i think the zero regis register usually in risk architecture the zero register zero uh, very intuitively right at a arch 64 because uh, do something differently um think differently the zero register is register 31 or 32 but however they uh, number them anyway it's the last and the first one anyway so you have way more my point is you have way more registers you so you can keep your working set of x86 registers in whatever a arch a64 arm registers suit you best and you can't use all because you certainly have some host um, host system like stack pointer and um, uh, link register like function return and other like thread local storage and so on so you certainly need some working set of local host registers and also local like local management like local variables and, and program state and, and other stuff so having half like 16 of your 31 general purpose register certainly allows you to keep the x86 state there always in, in registers and that is certainly way more um, way easier way faster to one-to-one -one direct maps than power pc with uh, 32 or 31 registers to x86 back in the day 32 bit even the first the first intel max were 32 uh, yeah 32 bit um to, to some people's surprise. Anyway, my point is, yes, uh, this could be faster than uh, Rosetta back in the day, although the original Rosetta was quite okay. Um, and yeah, probably only point is, yeah, it's not also, it's not rocket science. It's it's actually pretty, can, um, maybe we should actually do this here for fun to have some um, proof of concept JIT, which we already, already did some JIT, but maybe some proof of concept high performance JIT. I think I already saw some papers of high performance JIT for specifically x86 to RISC 5 even because uh, also 32 bit general purpose registers. Anyway, so yeah, Rosetta is coming. So Intel stuff is continuing to run, but certainly with somewhat limited performance and certainly you probably can't run virtual machines because they rely on hardware virtualization. So you can't just run VMware or 
parallels or whatever with hardware assisted virtualization because now it's, it's not there there it's not intel or amd uh, intel or yeah, intel or amd x86 stuff with x86 hardware virtualization anyway they showed their Meyer and um uh, tomb raider running on rosetta 2 um and and show they have shown so there will be hardware virtualization and uh, surprisingly and there you see open stuff right um, how limiting this is, you cannot just put Windows on there, so they apparently showed their Linux running, and hey, 2020, Apple is showing, for the pro people, showing Linux freaking desktop server Linux on um, Parallels VM, so apparently some people had early access, and um, there apparently is a Parallels VM, but again, not x86, unless they do also JIT, but yeah, that is not as performant as hardware virtualization, which is why we have hardware assisted virtualization. So yeah, it will be slower. Um, yeah, I have the feeling this quick start stuff, not everyone gets, I will see, we pulled most of our apps out of the app store, although we, we sold a, a sizable margin of a six figure digit at exa code over the app store for the last 10 year period. Um, I'm not sure we, um, stopped our sales in the App Store last October for the most part, so we only sell a tiny little fraction of something. So I have the feeling if you are not preferred developer, like probably us not anymore, then uh, maybe we are not getting this, but time will show. I keep you updated. If we ever get such things, <laughs> probably disassemble and look aside, probably share, like, and subscribe um, for that. The other stuff, um, that's it for this. Um, so I, I think the sales might go down. Um, of course, some people like I, Justine, and Joe at home might not care, but for pro users, it might not be because, yeah, although, yeah, ARM, you can certainly run T2 ARM Linux, but yeah, whatever. Um, certainly not what you're looking for, your Windows accounting software and stuff. Although, on the other hand, maybe Parallels, probably as Parallels and stuff, Parallels and VMware, they probably want to sell, obviously, right? Uh, they're also after your money. Um, so probably they will have some good old-fashioned JIT like QEMU TCG JIT with some maybe 80, 60, 70, 60% 60 performance, but yeah, it's not hardware system performance stuff. But um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how this goes. Um, certainly stuff we can make videos and report about. Um, the other stuff is not as amazing. Honestly, let's quickly scroll over this. Um, here the rest of the stuff is what I would call like gimmicks, um, time resyncing, whatever, app library, it's not, yeah, not amazing, so, um, what is this, uh, translate, so yeah, some translation stuff, uh, which, uh, obviously will not be as accurate, pin conversations, like, yeah, seriously, and they also see Apple in 2020, right, hey, look at our amazing latest and greatest stuff, like, yeah, pin conversations, it's like, Seriously, you, you waste a keynote entry for that. Um, freaking memoji stuff that I never used and will not use and whatever. Not interested. I um, really wonder that uh, 2020 and people care about memojis. Um, maps. Um, this map stuff is really not amazing. Um, I already wanted to make a video about I was uh, in France last year before this pandemic stuff and in Nice there was a new metro line they, they built in, in Nice in France there, Côte d'Azur, um, in, in, in amazing Europe. They built a new metro line there and neither, so they built a new metro line for probably five years or something, from even from the freaking airport, right? Uh, Côte d'Azur, uh, what is it, Côte d'Azur, Alpes Maritime Airport, whatever, so for the region, like not, not some, like, like, like a real freaking airport, right? that exists for decades, right? And so they, they built a new metro line, like a tram, uh, you know, amazing public transport for probably five years or whatever. Um, and they finished last year, I think, most of it or something. And my point is this freaking metro line was neither in Google Apps nor in, in, in neither in Google Maps nor in Apple Maps. Like you, you want to navigate in public transport in, in 2019 and neither of the freaking major apps has the public transport stuff. It's, and I think they canceled some bus lines there because of the new tramway and both apps sh still showed freaking outdated non-existing bus lines like uh, it's like anyway but this is the this, this stuff the reality distortion feel like the American youtubers think hey this Apple stuff and Google stuff is amazing and then you and the rest of the world like uh, 
what's the freaking advice and navigation showing only random garbage like yeah anyway um maybe the stuff shouldn't be as silicon valley centered right maybe they should have some people around the world and anyway um probably i need to make a dedicated video about what's up similar state of public navigation um there is um in the rest of the world safari gets whatever app clips um so yeah some new feature of app clips so that um it can load a tiny portion of like tiny tiny portion like you would think hey some 100k of whatever no tiny portion to think traveling right traveling is, well when we eventually can travel again um 10 megabyte of freaking roaming data because you now lo lo local uh, tr public transport app right now 10 megabyte thank you very much on roaming um anyway but it's, it's also it's not ma a major thing right um a new home screens like yeah whatever um uh, leave me in the comments below what you find here amazing um some redesigned widgets from ios 14 come to ipads like yeah uh, whatever uh, honestly it's more polishing um, call notifications like uh, yeah whatever um some some shapes and drawing shapes can now recognize stuff um, written text to select and copy it's like yeah thank you very much some surround sound um, it's like yeah 2020 apple gets surround sound it's like hey uh, advanced linux sound architecture had surround sound since 1999 or so but yet 20 years later you now get um, surround sound maybe somewhere um, some apple also I wanted to already so much so many ideas. I wanted to already make a video why I don't have a smartwatch because yeah, um, in my opinion only steals uh, concentration. I, I have already a freaking smartphone that vibrates every minutes. I'm already scaling down notifications because it's a total um, a total killer of concentration if you want to get some professional stuff done and it's vibrating and ding dong and whatever. It's like yeah, seriously. Um, and it's like vibrating it's like some youtube um it's like yeah some youtube news like you, you think you get an important message it's like only some youtube video notifications like seriously why do you need this anyway except certainly for this channel right to share like and subscribe but yeah um honestly this is all extremely underwhelming for you but leave in the comments what you think uh recording indicator yes, thank you very much yes light automations also I personally can't recommend this stuff, which is also why this channel is a little bit different than other channels. You know, other channels like I just did and stuff like, hey, this is latest, greatest stuff. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Uh, seriously, honestly, I have neither of this stuff. I have no home automation. I have some quality light switches that work and my quality light switches, like good old fashioned mechanical freaking stuff will work for 100 years to come and I don't need home automation stuff that stops working in two years or three years and it's whatever um, can't recommend this stuff um, it will be incompatible in five years will be dis discontinued and whatever uh, just switch on your freaking light um, if uh, if you need light in the night use your uh, freaking <laughs> light uh, flashlight um, I, I survived uh, many decades already with that and in my opinion, only um, only wasting your money, um, not long-lasting stuff, not sustainable stuff, only consuming resources for no good reasons. Um, spend your money elsewhere um, on, on whatever um, brings you joy and uh, improves your life or um, work efficiency or whatever. Smart, smart bulbs are like yeah so many previous it news videos stuff discontinued stop working compatibility and whatnot and uh, um apple yeah it's like seriously yeah i, I said this again uh, mac os code names in any case i hate this code names because no user nor even i forget i can't remember mavericks sierra high sierra uh, catalina or even el capitan what was the order um, it's like seriously what the heck version numbers you can sort nicely right sort numerically and then you know you and the customer know 10.14 was before came before 10.15 but big source like and all the international people all the European people calling me 
um, us here in the company, do you think they can pronounce Catalina or whatever the they say everything or El Capital? I mean, seriously, all the international pronunciation is ridiculous of normal people uh, trying to say this. And um, anyway, just use version numbers. This codename stuff is completely. Um, I, I have no idea why they, it's only confusing and not. Ah, that's right. The stuff gets a little bit of new look, um, which, but seriously, yeah, whatever, a little bit more rounded, so probably patented more rounded rectangle. This controls here look now a little bit different. Um, yeah, so so what? Um, it's a little bit theme update. But this is also, I said this before, this yearly operating system stuff is, is only causing incompatibility. Uh, it's a nightmare. I would wish they would do stuff like in, in decades ago, two, three, four years major releases, in my opinion, total waste of developer resources and user resources, reinstalling, incompatibility, breaking stuff. For, for what? For a little bit different theme, for some widgets, for some controls. It's like, yeah, whatever. Now this stuff looks like GNOME 3 or whatever that was, or KDE 5, wherever Apple inspired from this year. And yeah, so no less window titles uh, here apparently, so um, probably you see this style copied elsewhere sometime soon. Um, probably more hashtag peak bugs, wouldn't be surprised if uh, probably keep you updated and there yeah, whatever animations or whatever message stuff. But yeah, major operating system, okay, hey, we now have some animation and pin conversation, I can't make this. Stuff up, maps, whatever. Hey, you get pull down menus and recent documents and, and, and color panel and, and, and user notification and window active. And anyway, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you learned something. We can take a look at a minute to the comments, which we had quite some. I hope you learned something and probably uh, also, all right, I wanted to say I actually have here some stuff open. So, ARM stuff like Apple innovation, innovating my S, right? Um, Obviously, ARM stuff is not limited to Apple, so Microsoft and others have tried this, vastly unsuccessful exactly for software compatibility reason, and also Surface, Surface, uh, Surface RT had this um, more locked down windows with less application side loading, which uh, are yeah, super recurring theme is super uh, not popular. And there you see voting with your wallet, it worked, um, Microsoft um, rather cancelled this rather quickly and discontinued this. Also, certainly uh, Google Chromebooks, right? And um, yeah, maybe also not the most uh, successful, at least here at this rest of the world, Europe, um, Asia and, and stuff, you name it. Maybe it's somewhat popular in the US. Um, I heard some people use this in school and university. Maybe some schools and universities buy it there in bulk. Maybe maybe that makes the numbers somewhat successful there in the US, in Europe, there, yeah, whatever. Nobody cares here, really. I probably have rarely seen a Chromebook, maybe three times. So, um, I've, the funny thing is Louis Rossman there, on this other YouTube channel, he always like, does Surface even exist? Uh, like Louis Rossman always like, uh, he doesn't believe that Surface exists. Like, hey, even we have a Surface, <laughs> here you have it. Um, but um, I have to, does, do Chromebooks exist? Um, it's, it's like, yeah. But um, also the Surface, x86 Surface, yes, it's, it's the old garbage. <clears throat> um, peak bugs also, uh, Phantom Touches, previous video. But I purchased this specifically, mostly running Linux on here, um, just for the reason to be able to boot my own software which might be exactly the thing that you can't do on the ARM Mac then, and which I would not recommend this and rather, if you are a pro and you want to be flexible, then um, probably that is not for you. And um, Apple even says this themselves, that they will continue to ship this for use to come, I think. Um, they somewhere sell they say that they will keep selling Intel Macs for at least um, a year or two or three. And ironically, they have just updated the Mac Pro. I wonder how many, seven, six, seven years they will continue to sell this overpriced previous video. Overpriced, not recommendable. Um, you can build something more powerful for 2,000 euros than this uh, 6,000 euro Mac Pro. But um, yeah, that's probably the summary, in my opinion, not the most amazing, mostly gimmicks, uh, widgets, small improvements, nothing really that um, is worth calling a major update, except certainly the ARM transition. And even that, nah, not for me. We probably only get one for testing because, nah, but that's it. 
I also wonder some of, of course they sell very, say very little right in my opinion total fail only gimmicks emoji whatever instead of technical stuff like hey this API this hardware this spec um, for example they don't say whether it will be the ad identical like identical of course compiled for ARM um, Mac OS probably it will be universal binary I guess for this emulation for Rosetta as in the Intel and Power PC so probably will have again fat binaries meaning fat Mach, Mac O or Mach O whatever you want to pronounce, yeah, pronounce it meaning both x86 and ARM in this executables in this um, binary executables and shared libraries and dynamic libraries and stuff for this Rosetta emulation um, increasing the OS size of course again but they don't say if for example you can still sideload the apps right I wouldn't be surprised so this, this is the thing right instead of hard facts and numbers like, like yeah look look this look at this emoji and this max updates and yeah anyway so that we don't know we will only see if it's identical Mac OS you should potentially maybe be able to sideload apps like you can still today with app notarizations like uh. anyway but I wouldn't be surprised if Apple shows you and me and everyone the finger and stops this but we will see um, that's all the details I have for you today and now we have 1000 drop frames at the end of this live stream which uh, thankfully is only 1.5% brought to you to, by failing Vodafone Doxis cable stuff of yeah let's see we have quite some comments let's quickly take a look yeah welcome everyone um, well, hi all um, Marco says they are slow he's on an ARM laptop for months now yeah uh, my saying which laptop do you have do you have a Pinebook or a Chromebook or and by the way there were ARM netbooks right back in the day I nearly purchased some what was it Toshiba I think Toshiba A100 or something um, the only reason I or then it was not that um, the only reason I didn't get this because it was rastly overpriced netbook for a stupid ARM netbook um, of whatever doesn't really matter what it was but it was something was I thought it was Toshiba anyway didn't get it because now yeah, um, performance and stuff for the money and it's like yeah, then, yeah whatever but um, let's see the margins are going to be absurd yeah so um, that's a good point the, the ARM chip although the development certainly cost some billions I guess over a decade with all the hundreds if hundreds yeah, probably hundred hundreds of engineers but they have um, made this profit already for or they have written this development expenses already off for the iPhone and iOS and Apple TV sales and, and, and uh, Apple Watch sale, sales so they're if they're probably using nearly the same silicon and certainly need to anyway, innovate anyway for the next generation of iPads and iPhones um, they basically get these chips for free just a little bit more cooling maybe a heatsink certainly not a fan because nah, oh, that's not current Mac Air MacBook Air not where Apple is placing a fan um, Zhu Liang says they said it's Mac Mini Air they say the, the, they said the heat um, he probably means the first device um, the development transitioning kit is a Mac mini look-alike they are not selling they're not saying what they will sell to customers so that they might sell something else like a MacBook Air or um, a MacBook or whatever they might not depending on what's the state of the Intel um, silicon so yeah the first consumer device might not be the same as a developer transitioning device um, Alex Underwood says he doesn't think they can boot other OSs because they pushed virtualization as a keynote. Yeah, so I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple locks us down. However, maybe they, it, it depends whether they use iBoot or whatever that is on, on the I, iOS, um, iOS side, iDevice side, or if they use UEFI. Um, although maybe in the problems of course when people say yeah but you can eventually jailbreak this this is not the same I called in a previous video the other day that because you purchase this device and you own it you should be able to load whatever you want even if um, for an 
iPhone or whatever, you later say, no, I don't like um, iOS anymore, or there is no update anymore, you want to load your own Gentoo or Debian or T2 Linux or whatever, and more Android, you should, in my opinion, be able to do this because you paid with your hard-earned money and it's not like leased or rented or whatever, it's your property and you should fully own it. And even for DIY projects like here on our channel, um, I said this before, an old iPhone, an old iPad, use it as your um, environmental controls for your smart light bulbs or your air condition or whatever DIY for a picture frame or whatever. And um, you should be able to load a secure and OS whatever is to your liking in five or ten years to come. And jailbreaking is not the same because that is not the many not, not the vendor, the manufacturer allowing you to load whatever you want, but the hard work of skilled people who uh, hackers and computer scientists like you and me sitting there for a year or two or five years and analyzing, looking for security vulnerabilities. And it should not be our burden to spend a significant portion of our life dedicated to hacking and cracking this open a device that we purchased in full and not leased and rented. So yeah, probably maybe eventually um, advancing this year and in general, maybe I write a letter to Apple because I You've seen in previous videos, I have the first gen original iPhone and um, or even original iPad, which of course you probably can jailbreak. But maybe just for the fun of it, I write an official letter to Apple like, hey, here I own this device. I don't get software updated from you. I want some official means of cryptographic key or signature of whatever to sign my Linux software. And depending on what they send, even go to our local uh, politicians and lawmakers and hence I'm like, hey, Apple is refusing um, me to um, do with my hardware as I please and do whatever I want with it. And I don't find that is legal for whatever reason. But anyway, the fun stuff, we and you and probably everyone should vote with your wallet. And maybe also sometimes do more of them. Like companies are not changing. You know, Apple is increasingly locking down the system on iOS, certainly with smartphones and tablets, but also on macOS. And if people are not protesting, as usual, if you're not protesting, raising your voice and also voting with your wallet. They, they think they can get away with everything. And year after year, stuff gets more locked down and um, so on. You lose more rights and um, nothing changes. Um, so yeah, probably stuff should be done more often, but leave in the comments below what you think. Um, Rosetta 2, Edwin says actually works pretty well. People underestimated how well user space emulation can work comparing it to full system emulation. Yeah, however, I'm surprised how slow usually QEMU is. Maybe another day we bench this. Um, I've never benched it. I only see how slow QEMU usually is for me. Um, but yeah, as I said, TCG is way more generic and there's less um, optimization. And for some, some emulation, as I outlined some 30 minutes ago um, here in this video, maps better, for example, the count of registers and other features. But certainly if your target architecture has more registers, that doesn't map very well and you need to do way more dynamic register scheduling than um, less registers to more registers certainly is uh, a much, much better fit to do this high performance. But um, yeah, certainly mm, I would be surprised if say, well, getting 35% performance is very hard. And yeah, we will see what that I probably Rosetta. Yeah, anyway, 75% is real, realistic, everything. So if you have less than that, then yeah, you probably not done very well. And if you um, and getting very close to 100% is of course, you see on Windows how um, I think the Windows emulation performance, Microsoft has the same technology for ARM Windows and it's not as amazing and snappy. So I'm actually not sure what the performance numbers were there, but maybe more in the 75%. But if you have numbers and stuff as usual, leave it below. Um, let's see, Lascazi is there. And what else do you guys think ARM is the future? I don't, so EERS MRG says ARM is the future. Um, I also personally don't think so. Um, well, ARM, ARM certainly is, is there and there to stay for a decade, but the very future is certainly risk five because um, it's a race to the bottom and ARM licenses is, they cost money and it's inevitable that many like entry level, like Asian, Chinese and, and so on, they always look for the cheapest. And um, 
So it's inevitable, in my opinion, it's inevitable for all the low cost stuff. Anyway, you see already, Nvidia is using RISC-V for the memory, for the power controller. Um, Western Digital or so is using RISC-V for SSD or hard disk controllers. And yeah, it, money counts, right? Vote with your wallet. And if it's free, like RISC-V is free, then the first the entry level and later the high performance stuff will transition and of course there is still some work to do because there is no risk 5 vector extension it there are a couple of draft specs but it's not final so there is not like single instruction multiple, multiple data people are working on this and we will have something soon like this year or so or next year um, and also people are working on bit many other like bit manipulation extension for bit set and manipulation and what not stuff they have um, for example one stuff is led by Claire there from former Rock Linux of our Linux, but also Risk V Pico RV32 Risk V fame. But there is certainly some stuff to do, like single instruction multiple data. But other stuff is there, and people are um, moving to that certainly. So that I guess that's the future. But with the long term future, it's even hard to predict. So maybe the long term future, like maybe a decade is Risk V, maybe two decades is like neural network processors. So Another free fun tip, if you want to work on the latest and greatest state of the art, maybe um, certainly risk five, but the next step, certainly my prediction, um, highly parallel, like, like GPU like, but even more neural network, artificial intelligence, maybe, um, or other um, lightweight, but massive parallel core stuff. Maybe you could even risk, use risk five for that, like some like, 4096 thread of execution gpu like whatever but yeah that's certainly very it's also inevitable probably to um like some star trek star trek like um ai of hey computer do me that and that and uh, whatever solve me this mathematic equation to that and 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 hey computer write me program to compute the prime of whatever or more realistically hey computer uh, generate a map of this planet and route me some whatever you know shortest um shortest find me the shortest path of whatever exploring uh, the regular um next generation kind of stuff that probably we um also eventually in in five decades or a hundred years eventually probably anyway but <laughs> leave me in the comments below what you think um, so much to the future. Um, so if you do buy IoT crap, it will be somewhat secure devices, uh, inevitable, something knows this stupid chat jumped. The amazing Google usability, where did I, where is even the scroll bar? Hey, there's a scroll bar. Um, ARM is more future than x86. Um, yeah, certainly x86 is currently still pretty high performance but as seen with google amazon facebook even having their own arm and certainly apple and everyone and uh, their the kitchen sinks there there certainly is arm um especially this there you see locked ecosystems x86 is pretty locked with the patent and uh situation and very few vendors um intel uh, AMD previously VR or maybe they come back a little bit of Centaur of course there were others that are no more and yeah and certainly patents patents are not for innovation my ass so um, yeah that, that is the difference of an open ecosystem it's also not open it's also intellectual property but open licensing at least so certainly much more competition with all the many Asian and Silicon Valley vendors there in ARM space. Um, but um, yeah, there you certainly see the difference of open or somewhat open and licensable ecosystems in x86. And yeah, previous videos, super complex, right? No fun to either implement or write a compiler for or whatnot. Um, Alex writes, macOS looks very touch-centric now. Yeah, a touch-centric was also touch-screen, not amazing usability stuff. Um, Ubuntu has a way around, something released before, whatever. Um, first idea asks, is x86 either faster than ARM? Sorry for stupid question. Um, 
it's the implementation. It's not the ISR. As you have seen the previous videos. The, the, it's just the number encoding, mostly different. I would say ARM, ARM probably can be faster because um, more regular encoding, more uh, more general purpose registers. So per re well, it's how many um, compute units do you put in there? How you it's it's the implementation details. You can probably given the same number of logic elements, if, if you have a finite number of logic elements, probably ARM could sometimes be a little bit faster because the instruction decode is a little bit simpler, so you waste less on um, on the super complex x86 decoder, but that is that is just like 1% or whatever. Um, it's like nearly neglectable, but in general x86, it's just implementation details and the performance could usually be quite similar, although Again, because x86 is super complex, usually other architectures could have a little bit edge if you spend the same resources and process node onto that. Um, uh, Saipan says, I talk, uh, talk so effing fast. Um, it was a keynote, you can't really expect lots of tech stuff. Yeah, but this is the set stuff, right? Um, a decade ago, the keynote stuff was at least somewhat technical. Um, nowadays, it's just marketing emoji and other rounded rectangles. Um, thoughts on being able to load T2 natively on, you mean T2 Linux? Uh, J, J American asks, T2 Linux only if I'm, I'm certainly not spending my lifetime. I have enough more professional stuff to do. I will not spend my precious time on jailbreaking this. So running T2 Linux natively on Apple, yes, if it's like open EFI and we can just boot ARM Linux, then yes, otherwise, um, and if we get the certainly we certainly for our professional software stuff here, we need at least one, not really uh, wasting too much more money uh, of our precious money on Apple stuff. So we can certainly try and take a look, but if it's not open, then not, but um, yeah, we, yeah, we will see if we get this transition kit, if it's open to all developers only, or only Apple preferable, um, or Apple preferred developers, we will see, I will keep you updated. Um, you can find actually um, Apple uh, Raspberry Pi something, 8 gigabyte RAM ready for Mac Yeah, So obviously uh, Mac, Mac OS very written to, similar to Intel Macs, specific to the hardware and probably with some security measures for please don't steal our pressures protected by the um, board uh, copyright Apple stuff. So probably not really, unless, yeah, probably hacking and cracking and stuff, but probably this transition to a more custom sock makes it even harder to hack in Tosh. Um, so yeah, also long term, ah, right, I forgot to mention, um, a good note to end this live stream. Certainly this custom sock and arm makes Hackintosh even harder um, and certainly new resources, vast amounts of resources probably need to be spent on Hackintoshing arm, but um, yeah, certainly custom stuff all over the place doesn't make it easy. And then graphic drivers, so even if you can eventually, if this stuff is cracked and stuff open later for arm Hackintoshes, then graphic drivers, right? The graphic stuff is so different and Apple certainly in the meantime have their own. And then if you don't even have power VR, uh, nor Mali or uh, Vivante or all the other Nvidia and whatnot, um, Tegra and so on. That is a issue with all the 20 or so ARM GPUs or ARM SOC related GPUs. And of course it's not ARM GPU directly, but yeah, so good luck, no graphic driver. Anyway, um, pretty locked ecosystem. And last but not least, Henry writes, uh, Risk Five won't have all the innovation. Apple chips 2020, you can become Apple developer and develop applications, something. Um, develop application, actually people using feature Apple, what? Uh, I don't, this does not compute. Um, Risk Five won't have all the innovations of the Apple chips 2020, you can become Apple developer and develop applications for actually people using the just of, uh, doesn't compute, sorry, will you apply for the preview? Um, I will apply because we need to test as soon as possible because every day this stuff ships and our amazing uh, professional paperless office stuff, don't delay, try today, exact scan, OCR kit, recompress there of probably shameless plug. 
um, always good to um, shout out. Anyway, that's it for today. This is why we will see. Um, I will check later and see if we get one. Probably not. I don't have the highest hopes, but yeah, there you see. Um, free market not. And anyway, hope you learned something and um, spread the world to your friends and family um, if they want something open and maybe need Windows and other stuff. Maybe future Macs are not the best fit for them. And certainly um, you've seen Lewis Rossman T2 chip um, encryption not easily uh, repairable and part swappable and usually soldered memory and SSD. Yeah, so I don't think this will change. So say hello to your latest and greatest soldered, soldered memory, soldered SSD, no upgrades. Um, most likely, as usual, uh, we, you've seen the trend, uh, soldered and glue, the two biggest innovations there at Apple. That's it for today. I hope you um, liked this video and I hope to see you soon for the next videos and live streams to come.